I tried, but I couldn't get to sleep that night. I was too excited, too nervous. It was pretty much the same for me. Why? <laughs> yeah, I was surprised too. time she went up there that was years ago brian she's old enough to make her own decisions now <sighs> <sighs> we leave once our guide arrives yes sir uh, brian sephiroth sir <sighs> i must insist that i take you up the mountain my daughter isn't dad tifa you can still back out. You don't have to do this. I'm going, and that's that. There'll be two soldiers with me. I'll be fine. Pumpkin! Good morning, sir. I'll be your guide for the day. Tifa? You're our guide? I sure am. You can ask anyone around here. I'm the best there is. You could get hurt. Not if you remember to do your job, she won't. Come on. For a posterity, sir? Not today. Can you talk to him? Please, Sephiroth. It'd mean a lot to us. It's just one photo. Come on, where's the harm in that? Say cheese! Sounds like you were having a good time. One more! Yeah, I guess we were. Later. For a while. The reactor was halfway up Mount Nebo. I was looking forward to breathing that crisp, clean mountain air again. Of course, there were gameplay sections before this, but this is sort of like where it kind of takes some of the reins off of you and lets you just run through this environment and it feels like it's kind of here for the sake of not only like having a section for the credits to take place but to give you a perception of how this game is going to be different than the previous uh, chapter in the remake series where the environments are much larger much more open in scope you probably already know this, but our reactor's the first of its kind. It really put Mount Nebel on the map. I've seen a few reactors in my time, but none with such a breathtaking view. Who could tire of it? Everyone, eventually. Man, I wish I could go on trips all over the world like you guys. <laughs> trips? I think you mean business trips, which are no fun at all. Though you do learn stuff on them. That's so cool. Of course, the original game was confined to Midgar, which is a rather confined city, even in the slums where it's more open. But you didn't have an environment like this. And plus, they want to make it feel like the Nibelheim reactor is pretty far away, so they got to have you running for a good distance. And in a sense, it, the game kind of does look good, but there are a few strange caveats with this. Everything okay? Not going too fast for you, am I? Of course not. We're just trying to pace ourselves, is all. But then I thought you guys were in a hurry. Even so, you'll burn yourself out running like that. I'm not even close to burned out. Not with all the training I've had. Huh. Guess you really are the best there is. The original game map doesn't actually give you a whole lot of opportunities to see the characters interact. Because um, there isn't really like a banter system. It wasn't really until the... The high wind got unlocked that you could talk to your characters at various points along the journey and, and see what they have to say about things. Unless they were in your party, you didn't see them at all, really. But this, these little banter segments that they have really do give extra opportunities for character interaction. Seen those near the village, and they're not nice. What do you think? I think I got this. Then they're all yours. Copy that. 
Of course, they wanted to maintain, for consistency's sake, the same actors for their younger and older counterparts, as well as, like, between the different games. But it does seem a little bit strange that Tifa doesn't sound like a 15-year-old. Not necessarily in, like, what she says, but just the inflections, the sound of her voice. She doesn't sound like she's 15. That was awesome! You think? If this is how it's going to be, there doesn't seem much point in me fighting. I guess not. You leave it all to me, huh? Don't mind if I do. Since I had played the demo, it's giving me the opportunity to skip over the next section, but I'm not going to do that because, you know, I got a video to make here. I did notice while playing through the demo that, like, this came, game came out less than a year, I guess, after Final Fantasy XVI, which was a very, like, good game, good-looking game, and this honestly felt like it was a little bit of a disappointment running through this, especially this section of the game. On one hand, it's large. Um, you can look off a good way into the distance, even more so than you could in 16. And the character models look good and all that kind of stuff. But the environment, even though it has a lot of geometric detail, there's just sort of a lack of texture detail, which makes everything look a little bit cheap. Now, the rest of the game... Um, that, that other part of the demo didn't seem to happen. Whoa. Soldier, you can do better than that, can't you? Just you watch. Of course, we had met the guy who had trained Tifa how to fight earlier, and he and her will separate after the events of the Nibelheim incident. So it's reasonable to believe that Tifa has essentially gained all of the training that she's going to have as an adult by the time she was 15. So, I guess you could say that it would be reasonable to believe that she'd be effective in helping us during this section, but she's not playable, at least as far as I can tell. There's no point, like, when she just joins the party properly and helps you fight off monsters. I got a little thrown by the fact that she just stopped, because she's supposed to be leading the way. <laughs> I had seen, like, mods for the original Final Fantasy VII that put Tifa in the party and all that kind of stuff, but... And I don't know, if... If they're gonna have you play as Sephiroth, why not have Tifa in the party as well? Eh, whatever. Can't have it all, I guess. They are doing something different with Sephiroth than I expected. Uh, the way that he's talking, the way that he interacts with everybody. There is a little bit more uh, more character to him. Of course, you didn't get to see him a whole lot before he went crazy. You yeah. don't. you couldn't see his face. Now, in the close-up inside the truck, you could see that that was Cloud because of the blonde hair. But I'm guessing that was Cloud there that intervened to try to protect Tifa. So it's kind of these little, like I had mentioned in the previous episode, these little things that are slipping in there to sort of allude to the fact that we're not quite looking at reality, that Cloud is an unreliable narrator, that it is his He's envisioning himself in this story in Zack's position as opposed to his own position. His own part in that story. But they're giving you little hints as to this. We still have a long way to go. Shall we pick up the pace? 
Not unless we absolutely have to. Our guide might not be so lucky next time. Then, how about I go on ahead and clear the way for you guys? I'll be careful. <laughs> You'd better. Cool. See you at the reactor. I love the little reactions that they're putting in with the characters. Now, a lot of people say that, like, graphics don't matter, but especially if you're trying to tell a story, it kind of does, because it allows these little subtleties, like what we're seeing right now. Pay attention, especially in that last cutscene, to Tifa's body language around Cloud, because, like I had said a few times before, we are not looking at a, an accurate portrayal of what had happened on that day, and Cloud is envisioning himself in Zack's position, so it's reasonable to believe that all of the stuff that we're hearing Cloud say are things that Zack actually said. And if you look at her reactions to his like over-the-top movements, like he walks up to her and she has this sort of slightly startled reaction to him moving closer or when he starts doing those squatting motions, she like ha like has a slightly startled reaction to it. Because it's because this is a guy that she doesn't know. She's not comfortable around him or anything like that. Now, he's not trying to scare her or intimidate her or anything like that. But to an extent, he is doing that. And, of course, if uh, Tifa, if she believes that the two of them were close friends and she has this connection with him and all this kind of stuff, she wouldn't have that kind of reaction to him all the time. So it's, like I was saying before, these little... Things that they're slipping into the game to try to reference the fact that, yeah, we're not looking at Cloud here, we're looking at Zack. Tifa would not have reacted that way to Cloud. She does react that way to Zack because she doesn't know the guy. And it's something that they, they have to put in. I mean, just for the sake of, like, even if you didn't know all of this in the story... After you played the game, it's the kind of thing that you'd go back and look over again and go like, oh yeah, well that makes sense. I mean, look at the way she's reacting to him. She's not reacting like she knows this guy. She's reacting like she doesn't. She's not comfortable around him. But also, yeah, gotta, they have to cater to the audience that knows goddamn well what's going on here. People who played the original game decades ago who have this ingrained in their memory that yeah, yeah, that's not Cloud, that's Zack. So... Walking into this with this hindsight or foresight or whatever kind of sight you want to call it does give the game a little bit of a different experience. Oh, God. Uh, sorry if my voice doesn't sound good or if I, it's going to keep trailing off or something like that. I'm still trying to get over a COVID infection. It's not as bad as it was, but, you know, COVID does take a while to I mean, even if the virus clears out of your system, the, uh, the, the effects of it. God, you can be stuck with those for a while. I, I had um, long COVID symptoms for about three months after the last time I had it. And I don't know how long it's going to take this long. Hopefully not three freaking months. But I, I can't smell anything. That's, that's really disconcerting. And I've heard it might take up to a year for my sense of smell to come back. It's a dead end! Rockslide took out the bridge a while ago. Come on back, okay? Okay. Seriously, Tifa, look at all of the room you have here. You're not squeezing through. Cloud, like, he's a little bigger than you, and he's got that massive sword, so it makes a little more sense to him. But still, especially you, Tifa, you, you do not need that much space. You're not squeezing through a hole here. This way. Gotta make a detour through a Shinra facility. To think I almost made you our guide. Good thing I reconsidered. Otherwise, you'd have led us straight off a cliff. Lead on. Yes! Of course, all those little... Tunnel squeezes that we saw here, they were all over the place in Final Fantasy VII Remake, because of course that was a PlayStation 4 game. So they had to implement these little things in there, these sort of 
uh, tunnels or doorways or whatever to slow you down. The purpose of which is to give the console time to load the environment, load new texture files, model files, audio files, whatever. And the hard disk drives in the PlayStation 4 were not particularly fast. So the developers had to implement these tiny little things in order to slow your progression down enough to give the game time to load. Now we're looking at a PlayStation 5 game. It turns out there is no PS4 version of Rebirth, just PS5. So these the PS5 can load data a shitload faster. Much greater rate of uh, being able to load memory than compared to like the actual memory, um, the memory space available for the game. So those kinds of things are largely unnecessary. I think it was more a gameplay issue there. The reason why they put that little um, squeeze tunnel, that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> reason why they put that in there seems to have been more of an area to make it so when you're playing that section without Tifa, you weren't just going to go through there on your own. They had to have that there so you'd wait for Tifa there, then she'd show up and then go through with you. I know they wanted to have a section where you're like, you're getting a bit of a gameplay tutorial where you're playing as Cloud and you're going through these different um, sections, fighting progressively stronger enemies and all that kind of stuff. And then different ways that they interact. Like this enemy, you need to do a lot more blocking and physical attacks aren't quite as effective, so you gotta stagger and use magic or whatever. But story wise, it doesn't make a lot of sense for Sephiroth, even though Cloud said, like, yeah, I got this. Doesn't make a lot of sense for Sephiroth not to be participating in these fights. Hm. Magic beat the shit out of that thing. <laughs> Doesn't take much damage, physical damage, but you can you can kill it. Hell, I expect even the two other troopers following us around to do something to participate in the fight. We saw the one, which I presume to have been Cloud, firing at those flying enemies, but for the most part, they're just standing around. It's kind of kind of goofy, but I mean, it is a video game, so let's not uh, not get hung too much up on that kind of thing. The reactor may have been around for a while. There are still pockets of Mako gas all over the mountain. Try not to breathe it in if you can. Don't want to get Mako poisoning. Something the Final Fantasy series did a lot of, and they definitely threw a lot of weight into it in this game, it seems, are the mini games. Now, mini games, I don't necessarily mean like, oh, well, this is the uh, the bike mini game, or this is a submarine mini game. It can come down to just little things that change the way the game is played so we're not fighting we're not doing normal traversal we're just dragging this thing around to suck up uh, clouds of mako gas i would consider this to be a mini game now it's it does break up the tedium or the monotony or the um, repetitive uh, behavior of the let's call it repetitive of the basic gameplay so like you know let's say um uh, I don't know, never mind. <laughs> you can't have the same gameplay all the time without it eventually wearing thin. So they put these little things in there to break it up just a little bit to make the game feel more, like there's more variety. And um, as long as they don't overstay their welcome, like we don't have to do that stupid vacuuming thing too many times, it's fine. They make me do it over and over again, like a box puzzle in Soul Reaver, then I will lose my damn mind. <laughs> now, I wonder, like, Tifa is supposed to be the guide, but the bridge that would have led us straight to the Mako reactor is gone. So she says we have to run through this Shinra facility, which is abandoned for some reason. But how does she know how to get through there? Because the door was locked, and Sephiroth needed to unlock it. So if Tifa had never been through there, how the hell does she know where we're going right now? 
Yeah, that makes sense. Come on. Didn't rain in the original game. Why the hell? Uh, well, uh, that's right. Lightning. Just thinking about crossing that thing. Then let me go first. Hey, I'm the guide here. 